I'm so grateful that you care. The cross you did not have to do it. But I'm grateful that you did. Come on, praise team. I'm so grateful that you love me. I'm so grateful that you care. Yeah. Yeah. The cross you did not have to do it. But I'm thankful that you did. Let's say it again from the top. I'm so grateful that you love me. I'm so grateful that you care. Yeah. Yeah. The cross you did not have to do it. But I'm thankful that you did. That's my part right here. The cross you did not have to do it. But I'm thankful that you did. Let's say that part one more time. I'm so grateful that you love me. I'm so grateful that you care. Yeah. Yeah. The cross you did not have to do it. But I'm grateful that you did. I am grateful. I'm so grateful that you love me. Care. Yeah. Yeah. The cross you did not have to do it. Oh Lord. But I'm grateful that you did. I'm grateful. I am grateful. So grateful. I am grateful. So grateful. I am grateful. So grateful. So
thank you and we praise you in advance for this word. We first of all tell you thank you for waking us up. I said we tell you thank you for waking us up. I said God we tell you thank you for waking us up. We thank you for forgiving us for all unrighteousness. Anything we've said, did, or thought that's not pleasing in your eyesight, take it out of us and cast it into the sea of forgetfulness. Oh God, inject your love, your peace, and your power in this atmosphere. We bind anything that's not like you. We come together as unified praisers and worshipers and we bind anything that's not like you and we say, come in but the more, oh God. Speak to us on today. Oh God, speak a word to us on today, God. We assemble here to worship and praise your name, but we also assemble here to hear a word from you on today, oh God. Use me in a mighty way to deliver this word to these, your people. We don't take it or count it lightly, but we thank you for using us once again, oh God. It's in your son Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Come on, clap your hands when open up your mouth and say something to God. I'll give you 10 seconds to tell him how you really feel about him. How you really feel about him. You got five more seconds to tell him how you really feel about him. If you don't love him, don't say nothing. If you don't appreciate him, don't say nothing. If you don't praise him, don't say nothing. But if he's the keeper of your soul, if he's the lover of your heart, then tell him just who he is. My God today. Hallelujah. Oh. While you're yet standing, one quick scripture for you today, Deuteronomy 7th chapter and the ninth verse. We're going to roll through the Bible with a couple of more uh passages of scripture on today but we're going to start right there that's going to be our main scripture on today so Deuteronomy 7th chapter and the ninth verse we are so happy to be here are you happy to be here yes sir there's such a joyous atmosphere such a joyous spirit in here on today thank you for bringing your praise <laughs> Tell your neighbor, say, thank you for bringing your praise. Tell your neighbor, thank you for bringing your praise. Thank you, thank you. Thank you for bringing your praise and your worship. Woo! Your reason you're telling them thank you because the Bible don't lie. It said we're two or three. <laughs> it's more than two or three in here. It's more than two or three on Zoom. More than two or three virtual. So, so, so point at two people and say, thank you for bringing your praise and your worship. Thank you for coming the right way on today. We certainly give honor to God and the Son, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit. For without them, we're nothing. We give honor to a lady. We like to call the heartbeat and the rose a miracle of faith. And all oh, her NSU on today, her Norfolk State on today. District missionary Judy E. Little. That's our girl around here. And our whole executive board. But I need you to make the loudest noise you can make. Find you about five, six, seven people. Tell them you're happy to see them. Clap for them. I'm, ha I'm happy to see all of y'all. Happy to see all of y'all. Happy point at a point at a. I'm happy to see you. Yee! And there's nothing you can do about it. Yee! Super Bowl Sunday. It's Super Bowl Sunday. Y'all know how much I love football, so y'all know this word today gonna be fast. <laughs> Gotta get ready for the wings, the dip. <laughs> Gotta get it ready, boy. I'm gonna preach fast today. Tune. Matter of fact, raise your hand. May the Lord watch between me. No, I'm just for. <laughs> Come on, get it in, get it out. Hey, listen. Yee. Here we go. Deuteronomy. Seventh chapter, ninth verse. Like I said, happy Super Bowl Sunday. You know, as, as y'all can tell, virtually in Zoom, you know, we got on our jerseys and stuff. I got on, I got on the colors of a team. You know, I don't know if I'm, if I'm still with them. I love them, but they just I feel like I'm in an abusive relationship. I just keep on coming back to them, and they keep on hurting me. You know, you know, I just 
So, but <laughs> I still got on the colors, mama. I know, I know y'all raised us to be Cowboy fans. Okay, she's looking at me like, what are you talking about? <laughs> Coach, back to the Cowboys where I took you to. All right, I, I love the Cowboys, mama. God bless you. All right, listen, so <laughs> Deuteronomy, the seventh chapter and the ninth verse. I'm going to keep that on the video, too. She got mad at me because I said I was divorcing the Cowboys, y'all. Look, the seventh and the ninth. Look, watch this. The seventh chapter and the ninth verse. Are you ready for it? Yeah. I said, are you ready for it? Watch this. Know therefore that the Lord. I like this. Y'all know I like that. I got you got the fine things in the scripture. Okay. Know therefore that the Lord. Watch this. Thy God. Uh -huh. You got to, see that shit. See see. Sometimes we be missing it, Mike. Yeah. Thy God, Kalina. Yeah. Yeah. Ooh. Ooh. Anybody making it personal? Yeah. Ooh. 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 The Lord thy God. Uh, uh, he is God. He's not a God. He, I'm preaching now. He's not a God. He is the one. Anybody know him to be the one and only? All right, all right. The, 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 and, 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 and anybody that found him to be the faithful God. Y'all ain't ready to preach with me. I told you I can't take a long time. I got to get ready for the big game. Which keepeth covenant. And mercy with them that love him and keep his commandments to a thousand generations. Ooh, that's a long time. Ooh. If, if we had to take a topic, Elijah. Oh, I hear you, Peasy. Come on, let's preach. If we had to take a topic, Peasy. If, if we had to take a topic, Larry. You've been pushing me the whole time. If we had to take a topic, Miracles of Faith. Can I tell y'all the topic? The topic is, and I need y'all to hit this and let them praise for about 10 minutes, fellas. The topic is, somebody scream as loud as you can, the agreement. Come on, shine like you mean it, the agreement. Take your seat, but you already know. Shout glory. Look, we got living church on today. Can I preach to you on today? <laughs> this is a new one, Joe. Can I preach it fast? <laughs> Ain't too many people say that. <laughs> let's go. Let's, let's break down this word. Even if I say I'm a preacher fast, Judy already know I ain't gonna preach it fast. Look, look. <laughs> Amen. There. I, 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 I'm excited about this. I gotta preach this one. Listen, there is a word that we have with God that is so powerful so meaningful it's so powerful and so meaningful with God but <laughs> that boy ready <laughs> he hit that thing hot <laughs> but <laughs> he won't ready that time <laughs> listen <laughs> so listen 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 there's a word that we have with God that is so powerful and so meaningful to God. But I think sometimes we forget or we take this word for granted. The living church knows this word because, because you, you, you love to activate this word. The living church knows this word. That's why they're going to say something. Chairman going to scream at me. The, the, the word that I'm talking about, Mother Little, is covenant. See, see, uh, we have a covenant with God. Uh, and, and covenant, watch this, the word covenant, Katrina, you'll love this one. The word covenant, Zoom, uh -huh, God bless you on today. The word covenant has two parts to it. Mm. Uh, the, the first part of covenant is, oh, oh, talk to me. If, if I'm coming down your lane, Minister Shaw, the, 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 the first part of covenant is, it's a it's, it's uh, binding or establishing a relationship between two parties. Uh, see, uh, what am I saying, Rev? What am I saying, Karen? We got to understand our relationship with God in order to have the covenant to take place. Mm -hmm. See, uh, what am I talking about? Oh, I need a, I need, I need a praise and worshiper to talk to me, Joe. I need a living church to talk to me. We got to understand our relationship.
relationship with God. We got to understand just what the dynamics of this relationship is, Tanisha. Just what the dynamics of this relationship is. Oh, what am I talking about, Kalina? One of the first things we got to understand for five people that are screaming and yelling at me is we got to understand that we work for God. He don't work for us. See, the problem with a lot of people, Minister Sean, is they feel like I can tell God to go get it for me. Uh, go fetch that blessing for me God uh, no 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 God's gonna give you just what you deserve and just what you have coming to you what, what am I saying he's gonna give you the last part is the important part he's gonna give you what you deserve and what you have coming to you some of you got some bad things coming to you because of what you've done Or because of the lack thereof, what you didn't do. Some of you, your blessing is sitting over there on the bench while you running on the field getting tore up. Why? Because you won't listen to the coach. Coach desires to play for going right. And you run left. But what you forgot about Thank you, come on fellas I said what you forgot about Is the coach is getting to play <laughs> From somebody that's up in the skybox <laughs> That sees the defense <laughs> And what you see in your face <laughs> Don't look that big to them up there Y'all not catching what I'm saying He's getting to play from up there huh? And telling you to play down here huh? Why? Because up there he sees everything because from up there he knows what they're about to do you better stop running your own plays and listen to the coach listen to the king of kings listen to the lord of lords you work for God he don't work for you you got to understand the dynamics of your relationship Another part of the relationship and the covenant is, ooh, ooh, uh, oh, ooh, it's good. Having a spoiled brat mentality will get you no covenant. Having a spoiled brat mentality will get you no covenant. If you're, watch this, you can be spiritually spoiled. Ooh. She taught me that for years because she would say, I know who my God is. Come on, talk to me now. If you know who your daddy is and if you know, if you, ooh. the way my parents was is, is look, you go to school, you get your good grades, there'll be a reward for you. Fellas, I'm going to preach for 10 seconds. I hope they catch it. It's the same way with God. When you pass your test, there's a reward for you. When you pass this storm, there's a reward for you. When you pass the pop-up quizzes, there's a reward for you. You got to go through the right way. You got to handle it the right way. But God has a blessing God have deliverance for you. Lift up your hands and say, just for me. <laughs> See, but the third thing in this relationship is you got to make the relationship personal. Pull back up Deuteronomy again. Uh, Henrietta. Hey. Know therefore that the Lord thy God. You got to make it personal. You, you either got to say my God or our God. But I'm not saying your God. No, no, no. He's our God. 
or he's either my God. <laughs> Why? Because, because whenever I go through what I go through, <laughs> is there anybody in here that's like me? <laughs> I said, whenever I go through what I go through, <laughs> I ain't calling on Judy. <laughs> I may tell her to pray, <laughs> but I'm telling her to call on her. <laughs> the one <laughs> who knows what to do. <laughs> I may call Trina, <laughs> but I'm telling her to pray <laughs> to the one <laughs> who knows what to do. Huh? Stop calling on your mama huh? and call on Jesus. Huh? Stop calling on your husband huh? and call on Jesus. Huh? Stop calling on your daddy huh? and call on Jesus. Huh? Stop calling on your friends huh? and call on Jesus. Huh? Stop calling your bank account. Huh? Putting your numbers in. Huh? Checking your account balance. Huh? And why don't you deposit something in your spiritual fund? Huh? Why don't you deposit something in your spiritual bank? Yeah. See, cause and when you call him, you shouldn't always call him the same thing. Put the my in front, but change the back word sometimes. My healer, my savior. My provider, my king, my lover, my God, my way out of no way, my answer, my provider, my breakthrough, my deliverance. I'm calling you because that's what you are to me. You got to change the word sometime. Keep the mind in front, but change the back word sometime. Based on the situation, body hurt, what you call them, Karen, your healer. Ooh, ooh. When, you ch when you check that bank and it ain't got them funds in there, you just call my provider. When they say back in the day, he's my banker, he's my lawyer, he's my doc. Y'all not catching what I'm saying? Just sum it up, lift up your hands and say, my everything. Somebody say, my everything. If it's that, they give him a pride. Ah, see. Somebody scream, yes, he is. Yeah. First part of the covenant is, is understanding the relationship. But the second, the, the second part of the word covenant is uh, uh, living church and preaching with me. Uh, covenant is a, a binding agreement between two or more parties. Uh, oh, let me break it down for you, Rev. Uh, binding means, Mike, uh, that both parties involved are held accountable uh, to their end of the agreement. <laughs> Both parties are held accountable to their end of the agreement. You are in this covenant. In order to be a covenant, you can't be in a covenant by yourself. You got to have another party. Yeah. When Trina came walking down the aisle, and I almost had to snatch Mike from running to her, that boy said, Oh. See, look, he doing it right now. He was like, oh, shoot. He was doing a little Bobby Brown dance. I said, oh, let me, let me snatch him back every little step you don't take. I knew what it was. She got that mic, start singing to him. He said, oh, Lord. <laughs> I, said, I said, you got to give it a couple of minutes. She still ain't yours. She still ain't yours yet. Uncle said, the way you looked at him, I looked at him like, what are you going? <laughs> but thank God the Holy Ghost snatched him back. <laughs> but that's what happens. Watch this. But that's what happens when you see what you want. But more importantly, you see what God has for you. Woo! Is there anybody I can preach on anything? Uh, is there anybody in here? Uh, you're standing in the need of something. Uh, and God has told you huh, that I've got it huh, just for you. Huh. It's telling me. 
see her what's your name on it huh? can't nobody fit your blessing huh? can't nobody fit your deliverance it's Solomon huh? just for you huh? lift up your hands and say just a little bit fellas just a little bit but but you you're preaching good with me you're preaching real good with me I ain't had to turn one time and say do this do that they preaching real good with me. but you wanna know why cuz I called him in my office before church and gave him a nice coaching pep talk I ain't fuss did her I just say this what we gonna do this we gonna do this we gonna do I gave him instruction they said, oh, no problem. Peter said, Peter said, said, we got it, Pastor. We gone. <laughs> we got you, Pastor. Ain't no problem. Larry said, oh, that's what's up. <laughs> like, Larry almost looked at me like, that's easy. We, you you could have you texted me that. Instruction. That's what you got to do sometimes. That's what God does to us sometimes. He got to call a timeout and sit us on the bench and say, look, let me talk to you. You're doing it wrong. But you got to go back out there. <laughs> you, you, you're messing up. I call a timeout on the play. Because you was getting beat up out there. This is what you got to do. Because you got to go back out there. You know why? Look at somebody and point him and say, because the game ain't over. And long as the game ain't over, you still got time to get it together. As long as the game ain't over, you still got time to come back. Just ask the Cincinnati Bengals. They was down 21 to 3. But when the final score, they won in overtime. Now they got a chance to get to the Super Bowl today. It's the same way with you. As long as you got breath in your body, Joe, you can fix it and get it right. Because God. Got a Super Bowl trophy Wanted for you Lift up your hands and say So By any means both parties involved Are held accountable to their end of the agreement That's why it's very important that when you make a covenant, don't, 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 don't miss this. Catch this. It's very important that when you make a covenant, or two, or, two or more parties are involved in something, it's very important to make sure that you explain and understand what's being expected of you. You got to understand what's being expected of you. Because cause watch this. A lot of people do too much. A lot of people do stuff they shouldn't do. Make moves they shouldn't make. And then you get caught way out there. But see, launch into the deep don't mean launch yourself. <laughs> oh, I'm preaching. Launch into the deep don't mean to catapult yourself. If you got to catapult yourself, <laughs> something's wrong. Because you can't ever take yourself further than where God can. So, don't, don't go too far. So, so, you got to understand what's being expected of you. So, so, watch this. So, now the question is, what is the agreement? Are you with me? What is the agreement? Mm. Uh, Henrietta got my preaching partner with me today. Let's go to Philippians, Henrietta. Philippians 4 and 19. God said, oh, come on, talk to me. Come on. Come on. Uh, listen, what is the agreement? Don't down me. 
God said he going to fulfill his end of the bargain. He going to fulfill his end of the agreement. So now the question is, what is God's part? God said, I will supply. I hear a living church in here today. He, he said, I, I will supply all of your needs. According to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. I told you who our lawyer was. It's Jesus. He, he the in between. Who would we get better than Jesus to be in between? You, you, you better appreciate Jesus. He died on the cross for you. That he stepped in between. I, thought, I hear somebody over there that's grateful for that. I said, you better appreciate love and give Jesus. He stepped in between. Told you the other day, Father said, cut it down. He said, let it alone. Give it one more year. I'm going to say it every week because this. Y'all know what I'm talking about. This, come on, come on, Elijah. Because this is the year. Are you still claiming that? Are you still declaring that? Oh, I see somebody over here. I see. Lift up your hands. Jump up on your feet and say, this is the year. You might as well get prepared. Every Sunday, we're going to declare that thing. This is the year. I may not have got it last year, Red, but I'm going to get it this year. May, may not have happened last year, Joe, but it's going to happen this year. Kalina, this is the year. Just holler. Somebody just holler it out. Holler. Don't tap me on short. I take that back. Just holler it out. Holler it out. This is the year. But, 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 he, he said he understands his end of this covenant. But I just told you, ooh, get excited about this. That when you step into a covenant with anybody, you need to know what's being expected of you and what you expect out of them. Go back to the scripture again. Just keep the scripture up, Philippians. This is God's part of the covenant. He said, I'm going to supply all your needs. I just told you, you need to, when you're in a covenant, you need to know what's expected of you. But you also need to know what to expect out of them. He said, I'm going to supply all of your needs. Come on, fellas, let's preach. Just hold it for a while. He said, I'm going to supply all your needs. He said, one but everything you got before me I'm gonna supply all your needs but what you need to start doing and what you need to start saying how you need to start living is under the expectation that he's supplying everything you need is there anybody out there that's expecting God to work this thing out is there anybody out there uh, that's expecting God uh, to handle this situation. Uh, is there anybody out there uh, that's expecting God uh, to work on this miracle? Well, lift up your hands, uh, throw your head back, uh, and say, Lord, uh, I expect you uh, to be you. Oh, oh, I see, I see. Somebody really, I see, I see. They really believe it, fellas. Huh? Apple praise for 15 say That's why right. just keep on hitting it. Just keep on hitting Lord, I expect you to be you. Woo. I, I expect you to be you. So we know what the Lord brings to this covenant and this agreement. Now what should we bring to the agreement? I believe Henrietta has the answer back there in Proverbs. Ooh. What, 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 what does it say? 
trust in the Lord. Keep me churchy. With all thine heart. And lean not to thy own understanding. Let's go to the sixth verse. <laughs> in all. <laughs> Come here, let me talk to you. <laughs> The Lord's end of the bargain carrying is he shall supply all your needs. So your end of the bargain is in all thy ways. Acknowledge him because he's doing it all for you. So you got to give it to him all. See? Can I break? Go back to the fifth verse, Henrietta. See, when I was preaching this message, I, I knew Leslie, uh, Josiah won't feel it so well. I said, I need Henrietta. She said, Henrietta going to be there. I said, because we got to preach together today. The fifth verse. Can I give you a good point? <laughs> it says, and lean not unto thy own understanding. I'm going to say this. Everybody in here should go off about this. If you don't, it's on you. How can you lean on something you don't even understand yourself? How? If you understood, you wouldn't be in it. We still try. But, but I want to help you to see how many times we go through stuff unnecessarily. Because we won't just give him all thine heart. He said, give it all your heart. He said, I want all of it. See, the problem with us is we give him a little bit. I got an even better one for the heart in my notes, though. Y'all want to hear it? He said, with all that heart. See, so what happens is, Sean, see if how many people going to keep it real on this because everybody should go off on this one, too. The problem with us, we don't give him all that heart. We don't give him all of our heart. So what happens is we give him half-hearted efforts. He said, if you don't give me all, I'm not working with you till you give me all of it. He said, nine and nine and a half just won't do. I need all of you. I, I need all your mind. I need all your heart. Come on, fellas. I need all your spirit. I need all of you in every way. Can I tell you something today? Stop giving God half. Stop giving God portions. Stop giving God a little bit. And try on this year. In order for this to be the year, you got to give him all of you. You got to come to him open and say, Lord, here I am. I pose no threat, but I surrender to your will. I surrender to your way. Lift your hands up and say, I surrender. See, a lot of ways we can't be coached and directed on what to do because we don't listen. We hear, but we don't listen. We, we hear you talking, but I got a better way. If you had a better way, you wouldn't be in what you're in right now. Then, then, then here comes, here comes the number one game we play. The blame game. <laughs> What's the song say? It ain't my fault. 
did I do that? Yes, you did. It ain't my fault. Yes, you did. It's your fault. But we try. We spend so much unnecessary time trying to blame everybody else. We spend so much unnecessary time trying to find excuses. Excuses just mean you didn't do it. We know you didn't do it. I don't need to know why you didn't do it. All that matters is that we get it right. So, so we have these problems. But we talking about a covenant. Can, can, I, can I give you a good one? Talk to me, somebody. Can I give you a good one? I'm almost done. God knew there would be times where we don't hold up our end of the agreement <laughs> and covenant. See, I want to I want to push that word covenant to you today. God knew there'd be times that we break the covenant. God knew there would be times that we would mess up the covenant. <laughs> so, ooh, uh, uh, let's take the energy back up, fellas. Uh, so, so you know what he did? In the agreement, <laughs> somebody got to get excited about this. Uh, he put in some special stipulations <laughs> because he knew that you would fall short sometimes. Uh, he knew uh, that we would mess the mark sometimes. So he said, I got to put some special stipulations in this binding agreement. I got to put some special stipulations in this covenant because I got to cover you in every way. Here we are. Let's go. Lamentations. Lamentations 3. 22, 23. He said, these are the special stipulations I'm going to put in this covenant. These, these are the special stipulations that I'm going to put in this. He said, it is of the Lord's mercies that we are not I thought I had a living church in here. <laughs> Sound a little dead for a minute. <laughs> I see you, Rev. It is of the Lord's mercies. It is not of your popularity. It is not of your last name. It is not of the amount of money in your bank account. It is not of your title. It's not of the letters behind your name. But it's of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed. Wait a minute. I want to preach for a minute, fellas. Is there anybody in here that you're happy about the fact and you can keep it real about the fact that you messed up sometimes and you messed the mark sometimes and you made mistakes sometimes and you should have been consumed consumed by the enemy consumed by the problem consumed by the trial but is there anybody in here you're happy about the fact that it's of the last mercy you are not consumed lift your hands and tell them thank you It gets me every time, Sean. When I start thinking about grace and mercy on my life, Tanisha. Because don't nobody know what you did like you know what you did. I know what I did. And he still. I know what I said. And he still. I know the wrong I did knowing it was wrong before I did it. And he still gave me mercies. Uh, he didn't let it consume me. You know why he didn't let it consume me? Because cause, cause, cause the fine print in the contract and the covenant says, I got compassion for my babies. And my compassion will fail me. Go to the 23rd. <laughs> but because I know who you are, and because I know you're human, you've got the ability to mess up every day. So I got to give you some new mercy. The reason. 
reason he's got to give you new mercies because the mercy on Saturday ain't gonna carry you today the mercy on Friday ain't gonna carry you on today what you did on Friday you ain't doing today you may do more than what you did on Friday you need a new mercy you need a new grace over your life is there anybody in here that's happy about the fact that you got a new mercy on your life I see you Karen is there anybody in this house that you're happy about the fact that you got a new deliverance over your head you got some angels capping around you you got some angels with your children you got some angels with you at your job lift up your hands don't waste another second and tell him find ya. Tell them, Joe, we know the angel will be with our family when we ain't there. The angel there. Woo. The angel is there. Woo. Uh, had, a, had a friend of mine that's got cancer that Mother Luda knows about. And, and, and he had a seizure the other morning. I, I start praying for him. I called Mother Luda. I said, we got to pray for him. He had, he, he had a seizure this morning. Woo, keep me up church cause, cause we, 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 about, we about to go in fellas I need you to help me with this point watch this I, I called and said we got to pray for him cause he had a seizure this morning you know what she told me she said round about what time because he dropped in my spirit round about 7.20 I said oh my god I went back to my friend I said what did he have a seizure? She said, "Round about 7, 15, 7, 20. I, I said, hold on, let me tell you something. I said, let me show you this text message. I said, God can leave you by yourself. I said, one of the reasons that he didn't die is because he's got angels around him. He's got angels praying for him. Somebody's praying with you. Prayer will work because the prayers of the righteous still avail of much. I can't hear you. I said the prayers of the righteous still avail of much. I can't get to your house, Karen, but I can pray. Y'all know the words of prayer. Karen had a little situation. Karen, Karen texted us late at night. I was up. I was up. I was like this in the bed. I lit a test. Rolled over on the floor. And began to pray, Karen. I couldn't get there, but my prayer could. Ooh. And every time she texts us after that, the text got better. Ah. Y'all don't believe what prayer can do. If you did, you would get a little crazy. I said every time she began to text us, the text got better. Better, huh? Why? Because the prayer was working, huh? See, the prayer wheel may start off a little slow, huh? But then it stopped picking up some speed, huh? Why? Because I was praying at first, huh? But then she stopped praying, huh? Then she stopped praying, she stopped praying, she, he, 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 and stopped praying. Then the prayer wheel got to go, and it's got some power and some speed behind it. Somebody said, Keep on praying. Don't you stop praying. Don't you stop praying. Uh, look, in this covenant, there's sometimes ooh, we try to unbind ourselves from the covenant. We try to let go of the covenant. We try to go our way. He put a stipulation in the contract concerning that too. Let's go to Jeremiah. Uh, 
He put a stipulation in the contract concerning that. Listen, listen. Let's go to Jeremiah 31 and 3. Listen. The Lord hath appeared of old unto me, saying, Yea, I have loved thee. Oh, come on, fellas. Make it right, Elijah. He said, I, I have loved thee with an everlasting love. Therefore, with love and kindness have I drawn. We try to unbind ourselves sometimes. Which means we try to get away from the covenant. He said, with love and kindness, I'm going to draw you back in. Last point, and I got to go. Watch this. Catch this, living church. Let's ride it out. We, we got to covet the covenant. Do you hear what I say? We got to covet the covenant. Covet means cherish. We got to cherish it. You got to cherish the agreement you got with God. You got to cherish the covenant you got with God. Are you catching what I'm throwing to you? Watch this. See, the problem that we have a lot of times is, <laughs> is that we, we take things for granted. The biggest thing we take for granted is God. Tomorrow's not promised to you or me. That's why you got to make sure that you connected and you cherish the covenant that you have with God. See, watch this. This is a big one. God inspects what he expects. What he expects from you, he inspects. You understand what I'm saying? So, so, He's not asking or looking for you to do nothing that he doesn't already know you can do. you just making a choice to not do it. Everybody stand to your feet. Because this this, this is this the golden point. You ready for it, mother? Hold on, fellas. I need them to hear this. Then we'll come back in hard. I just told you he inspects what he expects. Are you, are you catching it? Don't answer this question, but just think about it. What if God evaluated you today? You can't lie because he sees all. What if he evaluated you today on what you did yesterday? What if he evaluated you right now on what you did last night? What if he evaluated you today on what you did an hour ago? What you said an hour ago. And the evaluation, oh, come here. Listen to me. The evaluation is based on whether you go to heaven or hell. That's why I wanted them to stop playing. But watch this. That's not a fairy tale, that's real. He's evaluating you every second of the day. And what you do or don't do will determine where you go. But you don't know the man. My man's name is Dick, Dennis Wigby. Okay? When you call out his wife's name, Mrs. Wigby. Wigby. Right? He didn't know when he got on that motorcycle that that was going to be the last time he saw his wife. And, his, and he was going to die. If he did, he wouldn't have got on it. You don't know the day, the second, nor the minute, nor the hour. But one thing you do know is you're getting evaluated right now. You're getting evaluated. So with that said, lift up your hands. And if there's anything you got to get right with God on Zoom, in here, start getting it right right now. Because you don't know when your time is coming. If you got to ask for forgiveness, ask for forgiveness. Come on. If you got to ask him to come into your heart and save you but the more. Ask him. Let him find you pleasing unto him. Let him find you pleasing unto him. If you don't hear nothing else I say today, know you're being evaluated.
waited by God. Pass your inspection. Oh, come on, come on. Pass your inspection. Get your seal of approval. Pass your inspection on tonight. Why you getting inspected? Lift up your hand. Anything that's wrong with you, start calling that out. Cause he ain't just the inspector. Uh, he the mechanic too. He'll fix it. Uh, whatever you need fixed, call it out. Come on, come on. There we go. Call it up. What up for your knee? Now is the time for you to get fixed. Fix your mind. Fix your heart. Father, I sinned against you. Forgive me, oh Lord. Here I am, Jesus. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Whatever you need from the Lord. He is here for you. Yes, he. Yes, he. Yes, he. Yes, he. Yes, he. Fixing hearts and minds right now. Huh? Fixing spirits. Fixing relationships. Fixing families. Fixing. Hey, 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 hey. He's healing bodies. In the name of Jesus. Oh, it's in the name. It's in the name. You got an agreement. You got an agreement. Come on, Larry. You got an agreement. I said you got an agreement with God. You got a covenant with him. He said, I'll never leave you. He said, never. He said, I supply all your need. Hey, I got a question. Uh, what do you need from the Lord? Uh, what do you need from the Lord? Call it out. I feel it, I feel it, I feel it. I said, what do you need? What you scared of? What you scared of? Call that thing out. A deeper anointing. I always want more. I want more of you. But I ain't gonna lie, God. I want the house. I want the house. By the end of the year, I got to have the businesses. Come on, y'all better call it out. I'm gonna call it out. God, God, but I ain't selfish. I want you to dip Mother Dixon in the fountain of you. Cause she wants to run for you. the desires of a heart, Lord. Come on, fellas. Give Tanisha the desires of a heart. Sean, uh, Chairman, give Ray, Ray, give, give them the desires of their heart, God. Give them all the desires of their heart, God. Give them the desires of their heart, God. What they stand in need of, if it be your will, God grant it unto them. In the name of Jesus. We gonna, we gonna have some joy music. Yeah, you, you already know, Larry. See, you already there. I hear you, peace. On count three.
On count three. Just run up here real quick. Lift your hands up and say, this is my year. You, did you hear what I said? You're going to make it personal. This is my year and run on back. What is this symbolizing? This symbolizing that you're running up here. You, you, you got whatever you got right here, mother. You, 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 get, you got a situation right here, standing right here. But when you run here, you're going to say, this is my year because you're getting what you need to go ahead and defeat this. Did y'all catch what I'm throwing? When you come up here, get it, lift your hands up and say, this is my year, but take it back to where you was. Because you got to take something back to your household. You got to take something back to your job. You got to take something back to the situation and let them know you defeated. But when you get back, there's very, listen to what I'm telling you. I'm giving you distinct orders. Go back exactly to where you were but when you go back there you better go back there praising because I'm declaring and I'm declaring that what you had did y'all catch what I said did y'all catch what I said? I said what you had going on before you came to church come on come on come on stay with me Elijah I said what you had going on before you came to church today is now over did you hear what I said? Don't miss the point. Crash on the point. Thank you. <laughs> I'm going to say it again. When you come up here, you getting what you need to take back to your situation. To take back to your household. Your job. Because when you get back, you got to go back to that exact same spot. To let them know. <laughs> I'm stronger now. Y'all catch what I say? I'm, I'm stronger now. So on the count of three, CDC rules apply. One, two, three, count out. This is the heat. Walk back to your seat and praise the Lord. Cause it's hot. Yes, sir, Tanisha. I need that tambourine. Yes, sir. Everybody clap those hands. If you believe in that prize. The Lord said, I'm feeling the temple. Yes, he is. 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 Kalina, run up here and say, This is my year. This your year. What the prize is that? This is the year. 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 Everybody clap those hands. Yeah. 
is a year. This is a year. I dare you to declare that out. Get it all in your spirit. Everybody say it. Say it because you mean it. This is the year. This is the year. This is the year. This is the year. This is the year for breakthrough. This is the year for deliverance. I don't hear nobody. This is the year for your miracles. This is the year for your healing. Find out your freedom. It's coming to your home. This is the year of boss. I'm declaring boss in the atmosphere. Business is in the atmosphere. This is the year. 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 Come on. Everybody clap those hands. Yes, it is. 